Hey, uh, greetings. We are here at Granite Hollow Farm, and uh, we're in South Carolina at Jeff and Karen's place, and we're going to look at some uh, red dorkings. It's actually um, a second generation of dorkings that we're going to be looking at. Uh, the first generation dorkings was uh, a year ago. A year ago, actually it was in January, and we were looking at red dorkings up in East Bend, North Carolina, and now we're in South Carolina. So we are going to do an evaluation of the red dorkings and select some birds for the breeding pen. So welcome and enjoy as we evaluate these birds. German and American standards were all somewhat different. The French used the English standards. Um, and there have been several variations of this pattern, actually five, that have been developed over the years. And Jeff said, what would I want for a uh, demonstration or uh, a presentation? And ideally, we should have good pictures of all those variants. Well, we don't have that here. Uh, we will show later on some examples of the good American pattern, which is probably the oldest pattern, and of the English pattern. And we might show a hand that shows some degree of a dark red pattern. But uh, this really variation of the uh, red jungle fowl pattern, which is uh, the primary ancestor of the domestic chicken. Uh, so this is, this is about as uh, pure as you can get in chickens. One of the things, here's a small point coming off of a larger point. Now he has very nice points. They should be precise. He has a double point. Uh, this is one of the things that we will not want. He's a young bird, so his comb is not well developed. But compared to the wide points some of these other guys have, his are actually superior. But he has a fault, which is the wide point. He uh, isn't as developed as some of them. He's got decent toes and a uh, fair color. His buddy there has better color, in fact, one of the better colored birds that we have here in the 60s and 70s. And only a few of us uh, saved what was, before the Civil War, one of the most common chickens in North America. This is what is called cotton, showing at the tail. This guy tends to be gray, which is good, but often they're just puffy white right here. And you don't if it's covered by the main feathers, that's fine. It's but when we select a bird, we should select for as much gray and as little white as possible. A little smaller than the uh, middle points. And this guy really, oh, he has six points, but he only has four really good points. And one of them is double. But the rule of thumb that the old timers used was that less than five points tended to be too sparse, and more than seven generally were too crowded. Uh, saddle feathers right here, uh, what are called the male sex feathers, because unlike the hen feathers, they're pointed. And this is the uh, hackle up around the neck. Uh, I, I guess this isn't the sort of thing that's appropriate to say in a dorking video, but these are the feathers that fly tires use. Fly fishing? Yeah. Hackle and saddle feathers are principally the feathers they use. But you want the hackle and saddle to match in color. This guy's very close. You want shiny or brilliant red, particularly on the back, and he's pretty good for that too. Now, with the comb, and he has five true points, and they're pretty good, 
Uh, with the comb, you want the comb to be straight and even. And uh, he's not bad. He's young, but a little, a little tendency to a thumbprint there. Decent color too. Very decent color. Now, wow, who's his dad? <laughs> That'd be nice to know. It's got a little double spike there in the front. Yeah. And, and this will haunt you, but he's got enough other stuff that I don't have to let it haunt. Exactly right. But at least it's a nice straight comb. Yeah. It's probably not going to flop ever. No, it'll, it won't flop. You could start with a single mating and then separate them next year. For instance, if you put together your ideal number of birds for a mating, um, and you had at least a couple of backup males. You breed those, and then in the fall, we do this again, or you do it, and you put the old males, the best of them, with the best of the pullets. You put the and then you roll your matings from there. How many breeding pens do you have available? Well, we whatever, we need, whatever have. we need to have. They'll put them up. You well, tell us how much room we have. How many do we want to hatch? Yeah. Well, that's... The know, more you hatch, the better off you are. Yeah, I mean, uh, let me tell you what we do with every... I told you guys last time we were here, and this is the minimum that I would recommend, is to do three matings. We do three breeding pens because, and we can pick uh, the best females, go with the best male to begin with, second best male, second group of females, not going over 12, depending on what we see. And then uh, in the third pen can be the third group of females, whether we put all the extra girls or there'll be some that we look at and say, just like we did with Cynthia's, and say, The minimum I would do is three pens. You can go anywhere beyond that. For people who've never bred, I think the moment you go over three, you're you make it too complicated. You're making a very, very complicated. What you may want to do is you may want to head the second pen with a male that balances the faults exactly of the females. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that way you you can have <laughs> genetic diversity. You know, uh, that you're hatching some three different males, but also, you know, if you're interested in selling some chicks and SBN, you want enough females to be able to fill a hundred chick uh, Types always first, breed characteristics second, color is third. That's why we have, you know, in the first generation, we have color variation because when you think about production, all right, you think about meat quality and egg qualities. And, and, and uh, production qualities, color is our third least important. It's still important, but it doesn't lay eggs. And color doesn't produce meat. It's a, the carcass, the body uh, of the bird that, that produces that. So the first thing we'll look for will be type. Craig and I will evaluate that together. Define type for Define, uh, Type is the shape, it's the silhouette, uh, the way the bird is, uh, the, the, the actual shape of the body is what we mean by that. This breed should have basically a galleon type shape. Uh, they should look like a land yacht. I'm looking at this bird, and when he was turned sideways, I love this type. But when I look at him this way, he's wide. So you're looking at a variety of things. So turn to your side. Okay, there's a dorky. But when he turns and looks at him, he's a little narrow. His chest is not the yeah. wide, yeah. yeah. The thing that you want to remember is that your weights have to do with your type. That's typically how it falls. So because that male that weighs the most, um, it's not always the case. But in this case, he's got good size. He's got width of body. He's got length of body. And just as Craig said when I first got here, talking about the, the guy in the end, we do want him a little lower in front. They're more concerned about the pain on the barn than yeah. the barn itself. Yeah. And you want, you want to have the barn. Yeah. Okay. The, one, the other thing I noticed about the birds is you got bigger here. Oh yeah. You got vitality. Not many.
love Not a mystery, do, we've got yeah, one. This guy has a tendency to widen gear low. And, and of course, I'm conflicted by that because. Look how narrow he is. I know, but he's young. He's five weeks younger than these oh, others. Five weeks younger. So is this guy. Uh, but. But they're weak. Oh, he's beautiful, Bert. You might pass, Butch. Okay. He's not going to be Butch in color, but in type. And so on. Now, here are some things that may disappear with age, but you really don't want this red on a on a male in this area. This should be all black. Okay. But it's still not something that you're going to throw a bird out for. Plus, it's it's just not that much. No, no. And, and where you really don't want it is here. Right. What about these, Craig? Well, there's a lot I like about this guy. On the other hand, as a show bird, and there are certainly birds here that are very cottony, but this is the cottoniest bird we have on this display. Yet, he has a decent breast, pretty good toes. Uh, a picky guy would say well, there's a little web, and this toe is kind of broad, so is this one. You want them to look like a natural toe. <coughs> but I tend to lean toward with this because we've got better color and so forth. I'd raise the bar here. Right? Yeah. Let's call him, I think. Okay. We're going to call him based on, you know, there are better birds. All right, he's light in the color here. Mm -hmm. He's got cotton. He, he, we named a couple, three or four things that are critical. And if we're gonna work toward fixing color, let's at least start with what we can here and raise the bar. So you're gonna be chicken dumplings. <laughs> Reds and silver grays. One of the things, it's not a utilitarian thing, and the farmers would have laughed at me. But one of the things I find a big problem with is white in the wings and white in the main tail. You have none of that problem. Okay, good. None. Good. Now, uh, one of the things that we talked about yesterday is width. You want a good wide feather. And this isn't your best bird for a wide feather, but it's not a narrow feather. It's, it's, it's certainly ballpark. Good toes here. Obviously, we're talking about five toes. Explain that to the camera. Okay, chickens have four toes, except for a very few breeds. And the Dorking is by historians called a marker breed. The marker that it was developed around was the fifth toe. And that was a thing that the farmers and the, sh and the show people often disagreed on. The farmers didn't mind if the toe was down and actually touched the ground. But the show people wanted it to be showy and flashy and curve up along the way. Uh, we talked yesterday about hair feathers, and this guy's got some, not as much as some of the birds we saw yesterday. But he's a good representative of the breed. So what you're saying, Craig, is that's a good curve on that toe. Yes. The toe could be a little more separated, as this one is. This is the perfect separation. Here there's a little webbing. I would like to have one or two birds that have six points. Yeah. Uh, or if we have all five points, it would be nice to have one that has seven points. When you have the legs between your fingers and the breastbone, the keel bone is resting on my forearm. I'm able to, uh, I'm able to examine the bird completely. I can look and at it the keeps the bird comfortable. Yeah, keeps the bird comfortable. He's not wild. I can switch hands. I'm able to examine the bird. Look at the wings, I can look at his head, so forth and so on. White tips. I don't like white tips. I like the bird, he's got a nice breast. He's got decent length. And although the sixth point is kind of part of the leader, he does have six true points. So there are things I like about him. <laughs> uh, and he's fairly bright red, brilliant here. But he also has some black in the red. Is his tackle in a saddle? Don't even come close. To yeah, let's call him. We're calling him.
again. The hackle and the saddle do not match color. And they should. Now, that's not as important as type, even close. Right. But it's something you take into consideration. That's right. And, and because we have better males that do have good color, we're going to be critical of this. Right. And that's one of the things that I was talking about yesterday. Uh, a lot of the farmers said, well, the show has ruined more chickens than it has helped. And the reason they said that was because they looked at color and said, you've got to be kidding. You know, he's got a great breast, he's this, that, and the other thing. Who cares what color it is? And if you're talking about meat and eggs, that's true. But we're, to some extent, uh, held prisoner by the uh, APA standard. And, in fact, these birds that match are probably a little more pleasing to the eye than the birds that uh, contrast with each other. Now, these toes don't go up as high as some of the others, uh, but still good fifth toe, which is a pretty characteristic. And one thing I'm finding here is we're being critical and looking at Once again, you can't eat it, but there's a little sign of a double point right here, which is from a utility standpoint, doesn't mean anything. But from a show standpoint, it's going to haunt you. He is a little light in the hackle, but look how he stands. Yeah, he does have a good body. Type. Does he look a little knock kneed or not? So just hang out with him. I don't think so. I think he's knock kneed. Okay. Okay. Uh, he's maybe narrower. You want nice, wide spread legs. He's maybe narrower than I like. Okay. These three. You can almost flip the coin here, Craig. Oh, yeah. Open the door. I mean, he seems a little, if we're really got earlobe issues. Yes, he does. He's a little shorter. This guy's a little lighter in the hackle, or he's yeah. a little darker. Yeah. Uh, actually, he's pretty short, too. Isn't he? Maybe that's our bird to call right there. His toes are down a little. He has a, a tendency to a double point. Yeah. There. Yeah. And that is genetic. Okay. It would carry. Yeah. With you starting the program, there probably aren't a whole lot of hens we're going to throw away. Got it. We'll go through. The scrawny ones are out. The color should run up the head, not that black at the head. A type one, is Oh, yeah. And, and I don't think we can throw them out at this stage of the game. If they're a good type, they got to stay. So, remember if that type, that black head is dominant or recessive? Well, it's obviously recessive because we had one showing it and now we've got one. Yeah, I think that is in the male. It's in the males. And, uh... So that, that's good then. Yeah, I mean, the only way we're going to find that on a male is through a mating. That's right. And... The female only has one of the pattern genes, so he can pass it to his daughters, and she'll show it where his sons, but they're young, and it's a developmental issue. So they will stand up as time goes on? What's this? They'll stand up for her time goes on? No, 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 no. The hen's comb comes over. Okay. The male stands straight. There was this breeder who was trying to save all the reds, sort of a troublemaker named Craig Russell, who uh, threw all the reds together at one point, and uh, Jack was interested in where these reds came from, and I think you can answer that better than I can, but they almost certainly go back to stock that was in my hands in the 70s. And so they're carrying, uh, I'm kind of surprised we're not seeing any of the a solid pattern of those that are called clays or tawnies, but we're not. Didn't see it, Cynthia's. So here's a here's a perfect example. It says this is the color of what our current standard American Poultry Association calls for. Okay. Okay. You want to zoom in on her? Here's 
a perfect and example. She's actually <laughs> better with the better tackle. Yeah, she's. But what I want to point out to you here is, you'll notice here's a bird where you say she's got better color than the other bird. But look at this. Look at this the cushion she's showing. Well, she's not showing it as much, or but she's yeah, I mean, that, this is an example of there's probably some better type birds, but her color mm -hmm. is a little bit better. And, so you uh, want to see that? Her no, color is a lot better. better. You don't want cushion. She's carrying a little bit of cushion. Now, she might be a lazy-tailed female, but she does have good width of feather. But the thing that I want you guys to remember, what Craig and I are talking about, is this, this dark color. Here's one. Here's one, this girl back here, Over that there. girl in the back. That's the English more color pattern, but you don't want this black head. They all have that black looking head. Yeah. Now, if you remember, when we were at Cynthia's, there was only one female like that. Okay. But there must have been males that carry that gene. Obviously, we know for sure that that was the case, having yeah. this many females. Well, yeah. Some of the other females carry that gene, though. I mean, they could be right. So, so they, could, they could still be like the big R, little R. Right. And exactly. so that color, but carry that as a recessive. So it is a recessive color. So my point is, is that you guys, you can. That's a little bit of a um, a breeding mystery. That you, can with. you can cross do some pedigree putting uh, a male on a female and doing, you know, only two in a pen to just try and do some, especially with your neighbor, and doing some genetic experimenting and figuring out, you know, where that's at in the male. Where it's coming from. Because that's a mystery to all of us okay. until somebody who's a detailed breeder says, I'm going to figure it out. And we're, and we're trying to figure out why they have the black head or this color. The same color. They're, both, they're coming together. So, yeah. Yeah. Everyone with this color is going to have the black head? Well, yeah. not necessarily. You, you don't want, want that. For English, you would want to have more of the gold color Yeah, you would want this, this, you would want this to run all the way to the head. Okay. Yeah. This coloring. Yes. Okay. Now, eventually, so eventually, you want the standard of the American right. culture, That's of our APA standards, is that color. Mm -hmm. Okay? But, you know, but to get to that, if you want to set up, a, 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 put Butch in with only girls with that color, okay? There's a couple of different breedings after he leaves. We can almost map it out on a piece of paper yeah, to do talk that. about yeah. some options of what you can do with that. Okay. Okay. But you could put, you could do a mating where Butch or one of those younger males is in with a group of females that are all uniform in color. To a certain extent need to be colorblind in the initial selection. Yeah, we want to, we want to concentrate on type. Remember type is number one. And in future generations, you want to gravitate towards the American pattern. I do think, Craig, we should at least, if we feel like the American standard of perfection color pattern, if, they're, if they have body and they have their worth keeping, we could set aside a, that breeding, you know, that could be five or six. The pattern is there and her color is good, so she is. That's She's a nice a female. Girl. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on her. But don't you think, in our separation, should we keep mixed colors? <coughs> or should we document their color pattern as we, you know? I, I guess way? if I were going to, uh, you're going to go with a uh, almost a clan system, uh, and it's based on quality. Uh, I would think that we would, as much as possible. Now, if we've got a super hen, right? That is the wrong pattern, but she's maybe the best overall hen. She probably goes with right. good girls. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you mean a bad color, good body? Yes. Yeah. Uh, great type, yeah. nice size. Because you can always cull from her. Gen you cull from, from future generations. Right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think we do want to separate them by quality as much as possible, and to the extent that we can, the top level hens should be APA But if we have hens that have everything else, they may cut into that group. Exactly. And if they don't, then we can 
You do that and that can be a second mating. Yes. No, no the others are going to come over. Okay. Yeah, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Um, That's a fantastic human. Oh, yeah. And yet she shows some non-American characteristics. I thought we had like a pinch tail or something on her that you were Yeah, her tail's about. not as broad as it could be. But, uh, she's looking good now. Oh, Yesterday she wasn't showing her tail off as well. <laughs> okay. But uh she worked on last year. Yeah. Uh, I like the English color pattern. Well, she's yeah. not really English. She's dark headed, but she tends to be American although she's got some faults. She's lacking stippling here. But look at the size of her. Look at the width of her. Look at her toes. I mean, she is, she's a great girl. Now, there was one girl that was English pattern and very dark. And she was wonderful type. And we were sort of odd by her, at least I was. But when I looked at the fine points, I found out that she only had four toes on one foot. She had a fifth toe, but no fourth toe. Now. Early on, we might accept that, but certainly so, that's not something you want in the long run. Tell me this, how did you, are these random girls? Yeah, it's just yes, these are just there random girls. Yeah. Okay. All right. So they look pretty out. darn good for random girls. Yeah, but we could probably begin by saying, yeah, yeah. I now, mean, this girl has great color, but look at her pinched tail. Yeah. yeah. Number if they're over 84 and up is the younger group. Hey, could be interesting. Stop it, please. Yeah, she was the second. I think that's a little okay. white one. You see out here? I am not sure I've seen any of those birds yet. Like the hen that had four toes of one foot. Okay, as Janine Peters said, if you don't have a perfect dorky, the best one you might have might have nine toes. Right. Uh, and the bird is great otherwise. Uh, next year, I wouldn't want to keep her. Right. But maybe this year we do. Yeah, well. Uh, but if we have a four toed bird, it's only four toes and eight foot, I think she has to go. Okay. Rotate him. He could do just a mating that was just APA standard color. But then equal to pen one would be. Birds with great type that have both colors. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That'd be up to you though. As soon as we add, I mean, it depends how much you want to nitpick in color breeding that first year. If they're going to let us coach them, I think you should avoid nitpicking color the first year and put best bodies. Learn one year with having little variation in female color. The second year, once you've got a year under your belt of reading, step it up a notch, critique the color. Okay, that's what I said yesterday. Yeah. And uh, now, the flip side is, is that you hatch some birds out, and I'm down here again. So hey, you guys got some birds out. Let's go ahead and do a little pan of four top APA colored females in with X male, and let's just get a, a group toe punch and let's look at those and evaluate those down the road. Let's that might be up. another. I, I would be more than okay. I think that's a great idea. So we're going to look at body type first. Okay. As we looked at hens yesterday, some of them had very, very nice wide wing feathers. This girl's a little narrow, but she feels like a dorking. She's actually a blackhead. Her pattern is not English at all, but she's a blackhead, okay. which is. Normally a call, but not at your. She's got some <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, she's a black head. Her wing feathers are a little narrow. Her tail feathers are shade narrow, but she's a good girl. Okay, there are advantages to you to have a uniform APA flock. Okay. That means that you not only can sell to sustainable people who want to use historic breeds in traditional ways, you can sell to show people okay. and so, charge them more. Okay. <laughs> this girl, uh, this is the one that Craig 72. really liked. Okay, it's number that I, one. Yeah, what's what number, number one? Number one for weight. Oh, she's number one. Okay. Wait. So we were talking about she has, when you put her in the cage and take a look at her, she has phenomenal type. Craig also pointed out that she is, she's early maturing. She's the, she got a, a flop comb on her. All right, now we are, she does have that 
English color pattern that we're talking about with the black head, but we are, uh, we're gonna ignore that color for this generation. But this is really probably the best female. I would say. Body type. And so this is now Great toes. our measuring stick for the rest of the birds. Okay, the standard is at the top, but now we're back. This is we're, our top. This is our top, okay. okay? So this bird will go in pen one okay. in the breeding pen, all right? And her number is one. So okay. she's got excellent toes, good body type. Well separated. Well separated toes, five toes on each foot. She's got a flop comb. She's got a nice, uh, nice beak, excellent head. You notice her eye is nice and and opened up and, and check her pelvis. Uh, yeah. You getting any eggs yet? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah you get. I can fit almost four fingers. She's she's yeah. got excellent and, abdomen and you can capacity. Get almost three between the. That's uh, right. <laughs> yeah, this is a fantastic bird. Special. All right, we got to remember you as we go through the rest of the girls. All right. Bless you. See ya. Have a good run. How many girls are going in each pen? What About twelve. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And, but, and maybe three will have less than 12 because I think, I think you have 37 hens, but 36 to select actually, from. And we might actually end up kicking a couple out. Some of them yeah. are pretty small. Some yeah. We've yeah. got some I down there just... that the one the girl had seizures early That's on. Great. She's not going to anybody. Then we'll know. We'll, we'll know. They're not. Right. So if you want to give me the colors represent pen two and three. We'll evaluate them, we'll talk about them, and out the door they go. Got it. And, you, okay. and Jeff, you can keep bringing them to the cages as they empty. And if I feel... <laughs> Stay at the good chicken catcher. I want him to... Black one. I want him to... Uh, this is going pen three? Yeah. Okay, and then, you know, we should also do a, a reject color. Maybe that should be black. We don't have... If, if I don't have enough. Different. We don't need a reject color. Oh, we, we just, just we don't know that. Colors. Got it. All right, I'm good with that. But she's got great tight, but she's going in pen three, and here's why. She she's got a pen two. I'm so, hang on a second. Change she's got a pen right two. Now. This hen is going to be a pen three bird, even though she feels like a dorking. She's got great tight. She's American color pattern, but she's lacking a fourth toe. No, she's got oh, a gotcha. fifth toe. She's gotcha. lacking the fourth toe on this foot. But she has enough other stuff that we don't want to throw her out. And she might, in fact, produce kids that go much higher. Okay. But I'd rather avoid that kind of a problem in your pen number one. Five toes is a dominant gene. Okay. That's why we can keep her, put her on a five-toed male, mm -hmm. and we won't have issues. Right. Now, Look at that lobe, huh? Yeah, this quite white in the earlobe a tendency to double points and only a narrow four points uh, but she's a pretty chicken and she's an English pattern uh, but my tendency she's 14 in weight I would probably put her to number three also I agree when I first looked at her I thought oh she's a, she's a pen one bird but I find some little things here. She has a tendency to double toenails on the fifth toe. Where's that come from? Oh, it's just a trait that runs through the breed. But you, her color is wonderful. She's American pattern. And, but she has white earlobes. Uh, most of the old guys would not have gone against her for that. But this is a genetic characteristic. Okay. So I don't know whether we want to put her three or two. Let's go. Number nine. She got type? Yes. Let's yeah, keep her in two. All right. This girl has got great toes. She's American pattern. Does have white ear lobes. Um, but she actually has six points, which we probably want. She's not as big as some of the hens. She doesn't have the breast that I'd like to see on them, but she's young. Hen two. Probably, yeah. And here's a bird with double points, good toes, fairly decent type. She's got a double point. Doesn't have any major flaws. Lots of hair feathers. Pen two, huh? Yeah. She's not pen one. Pen two. Oops, I press it. Now, other than that. Yeah, and a little here. Together, white. 
Yeah, and her earlobes. Oh, that's a heavy white earlobe. Yeah, heavy white earlobe. Let's put her in three. Yeah. Okay. Barely five points. That's the most white earlobe we got. From a genetic standpoint, okay. kind of interesting. This bird is not a spangled English bird. This bird is showing the uh, dark variant with the lacing. So she's one of only a couple that show that. <coughs> she uh, is dark headed where a bird can be dark headed. But uh, lacing. yeah, she's showing <laughs> lacing. And what color pattern did you say? Uh, she's showing the dark red pattern, dark red. which is the same pattern as the colored birds. And that's a pen three bird, huh? Oh yeah. Look at the points. Four, but not very good. Pen three, or should we not make her at all? Yeah, she's okay. not good English pattern. She's number fifty. But she's working that way. She's got a breast on her. She's broad. She's got good toes. She's got some hair feathers. She's got some white in the earlobe. Pen three. Oh, she's good enough to go, but whether it's two or three is some question. I would say the points, she's got pretty good comb. Made a type? Yeah, maybe two. Ah, she's got seven points, but although there's a tendency here to a double point there. But, she's uh, number seven in weight, just to let you know. And she's good American color pattern. I guess 10-1. Oh, 